Hello and welcome to the Spinspire screencast. In this video, I am going to show you how to build a cloud VM, a Linux VM in the cloud, install web server, MySQL database server, and um, PHP server, everything on it, and build a LEMP stack, L E M P, a Linux, Nginx, MySQL, and PHP server. Uh, as well as install Drupal on it. Okay, so let's get started. First thing you need is a cloud provider. Mine is Wolter. You can have your own. Let's select a location. Select an operating system, which my my operating system of choice is Ubuntu 14.04. Let's uh, choose the smallest server size. Enable IPv6 and private networking. It doesn't really matter. I'll put my uh, um, private key on it, sorry, public key on it, so that I can log in easily. And let's place the order. This starts building the VM. Now, in the meanwhile, what I'm looking for is, uh, let me go into my Namecheap account where I manage my um, host names, my DNS names rather. And it would be nice to to assign a DNS name to my um, IP address that will be assigned to this. So let's see if this uh, gets an IP address soon. I'm just waiting for the VM to get created, and as soon as the IP address shows up, I will be able to associate a host name. So there's the IP address. Let's copy this and we go in here and I'll call it server 5 and I will save um, the IP address and now shortly I should be able to see host server 5.spinspire.com should point to a new oops looks like now it doesn't point to anything Ah, that's the IP address, right? Isn't it? Yes, correct IP address, good. So now it will take a minute or two for this um, VM to actually come up. So just to see whether when it comes up, I can ping it by name, server5.spinspire.com. All right, it's not up yet. So, at this point, uh, there is not much to do but to wait. And as you know, that's no fun. So let me tell you what I'm about to do then. Uh, we are installing uh, this on Vulture with uh, 768 megabytes RAM. Uh, these are all uh, SSD servers. That's my IP address. I'm, I'm installing the Ubuntu server operating system on it. And uh, I will be starting with uh, installing MySQL and then Nginx and then PHP and then finally Drush and Drupal on it. Um, let's see if the machine is up. I guess it's not yet up. So I just have to wait for it to come up. Hopefully I will be able to cut this part out of the video because uh, it's just boring wait. Nothing is happening so far. Let's go to the manage and look at the console. Looks like the VM is not even up, so we cannot see the console. Okay. We just have to wait. Wait, wait, wait. Ah, looks like something is happening. The console coming up pretty soon ping will start responding yep there it comes and I now 
All right, now that the VM is up, let's try to log in to the VM using SSH root at server 5.spinspy.com. Okay, so it's telling me that you have an old fingerprint for this server in your known host. So let's just go and delete it, the last few. Um, yes, and hopefully it will not ask me for password because I have uploaded my public key to the server. It is asking me for password because it is not done installing my public key on this server. So we may have wait a second or two before we can try this again. All right, let's try to log in to the server using ssh root at server5.spinspy.com. Great, get in. The f uh, you saw that there was a little delay in letting us in. It's because the server, the SSH server, uh, was trying to look up our IP address and trying to translate that into a DNS name, which it didn't, it was not able to do and it timed out. So to stop wasting that time, we will go into uh, etc SSH 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 dconfig, go to the very end and add a line saying use DNS space no. Once you do that, it will, and then you say service SSH restart. Now it will stop looking up our um, IP to host name conversion. That'll save some time. So for example, now if I exit and try to log in again, it goes much faster. Great. So the first order of business is I like to use uh, VI set key binding. So I say set minus OVI. And then I also go into bash and bash dot bash RC in etc system wide and then make this permanent. I'm now ready to check for updates to any packages. apt get minus y update. Mm -hmm. So this uh, makes sure that I have a latest list of packages and then I upgrade, which means any package that is currently installed gets upgraded to the latest version. Looks like uh, everything is up to date. First thing we do is install some essential software that we really will need in general. So let's uh, install a few things. And that is so here's my list of uh, basic software that I always need. And let's say apt get minus y install. And then I'm pasting the list, which is Vim, curl, unzip, uh, NTP, which is the network time protocol to keep my uh, clock synchronized correctly. Sudo to allow me to do root operations without being root and use do it as a regular user. And then depconf and dialog. These are for configuration of packages. Let's go. Now that I have installed this, I need to do one more thing, which is I need to um, I need to find a way for me to log in and uh, uh, perform the root operations without really uh, without providing my password. So for that, I vi etc sudo or sudo or start t. I open a new file in there, and I paste this information in there. Now read this carefully. It allows members of group sudo to execute any command without password. And you have to just type it exactly the way it says, percent sudo, all equal to parentheses, all colon, and all that. You, I don't have to read it for you. You can read it. And this is needed. Again, all this information will be available in the video notes. And a link to the video notes will be included in the description. All right, let's save and quit. Now, <clears throat> we need to add a non-root regular user. So let's do that. So we say 
user add uh, Jitesh that's my name and I will make the primary group of this user ADM and admin group and the secondary groups will be sudo and www data we will create a home directory for this user and we will also um, assign him a shell of bin bash I think that's it let's do it okay now I want the uh, the public keys that root has I want to copy the same public keys into this new user so let's make directory in Jitesh's home dot ssh and copy roots dot ssh authorized keys into jitesh's dot ssh and since root copied files into jitesh's home directory let's change the owner back to jitesh change owner recursively jitesh and adm to tilde jitesh okay so now all the files are owned by jitesh at this point we are ready to exit as root and come back in as sorry come back as Jitesh all right we are logged in now if we turn, want to turn into root we just have to do this now it says unable to resolve vulture dot guest so that let's fix that we open etc host name and we set the host name to server 5 dot dot com save and quit and then we that is saved in etc host name file now let's set the host name host name minus capital F etc host name so this will read the host name from that file let's exit exit log back in and now it really says server file great at this point we are ready to start installing the web server let's do that um, sudo apt get install nginx let's put minus y in front of it so that just installs the web server and when we are done we can then visit server 5 5.spinspy.com and there it is nginx is running so right with that we are already done installing the web server the next thing to do is to start installing the database server and PHP let's install PHP first uh, or we can install database let's install database okay sudo apt get install mysql server hmm. that installs the mysql server it will ask me for password for now I'm just leaving the password blank I will change that soon all I'm doing is pressing enter whenever it asks me for root password so no password blank password all right my skill has been installed now I'm going to uh, sudo minus I become root and generate a password the password generation can be done very easily with open SSL rand command generates a random number we say uh, generate a 16 bit random number and then output it as a hex number once you do that you get a very nice fairly random looking uh, string which serves as a very good password so at this point I can s let me set this as the password in order to do that I will run mysql install db which which I am not sure what it does but it's it is good for security it seems and then mysql secure installation which really secures the installation what's your current root password none what do you want to set a new pass root password yes what's the used root password I am now just pasting enter and then re-enter it paste again so remove anonymous users yes disallow root login remotely yes and then remove test base database yes and reload privilege tables so with this hopefully we have secured our 
um, MySQL installation. Now, remember we set a very random um, password for MySQL root user. We don't remember, we won't remember it. So let's save it in my.cnf. So I say cat, send the output to roots home my.cnf. And then, so this is basically whatever I'll type will go into that file. Create a section called client, set the user equal to the root, password equal to this, what I have generated and it's still in my clipboard. Save that, press control D to end the cat input. I just press control D to end it. And with this, I now don't have to remember my root password. I can just say that MySQL and it logs me in because the password is sitting in .my.cnf in my home directory. Now let's create a non-root uh, user for MySQL also. So let's start MySQL. We'll, okay, we'll do that in a minute. Let us now uh, install PHP and its companions. So that we can, we already installed Nginx, this one, but Nginx is static for static file serving. We want to um, install, we want to serve dynamic uh, content. So what we will do is we will install PHP and a few other things. apt get minus y install paste this. So we install PHP 5fpm which is the PHP fast CGI server. Remember that Nginx does not embed PHP directly inside it like I, I, Apache does, but PHP runs outside in a fast CGI server. PHP pair is for package management, extension management in PHP. And this is a GD, the graphics driver for PHP, graphics image manipulation, MySQL driver, and then PHP 5 curl to for PHP to be able to make HTTP calls to other servers. So let's install. All right, great. So now we can exit this and uh, we can in Jitesh's home, let's create a directory dev and web hmm. uh, it fails because it's trying to create two directories with one command you need minus p option to create the parent and the child let's go to dev web and create one file inside it index.php and that contains nothing but one command php info in it so this will output a lot of uh, status information about PHP and we just open angle bracket question mark PHP put one function called PHP info in it and we do not close the PHP tag and that's how you should do for code only PHP files save and quit now we sudo minus I and CD to nginx sites enabled it already has a default uh, server configuration which is pointing to sites available default. Let's delete that default. Remember I'm deleting it from sites enabled, not from sites available. It is still available in sites available. So if we needed it, we could bring it back. And now create a new file in sites available, call it PHP. And here's a server configuration. And it's called listen, it's, we tell him to listen on port 80. Server name will be server5.spinspire.com. And um, the root for that root directory, the document root will be home jitesh dev web. An index file is index.html should be the first option. The second preference should be index.php. Let's save this. And now to enable it, we have to create a symbolic link. ln-s 
from sites enabled to sites available. Once you do that, you have in sites enabled a PHP symbolic link pointing to the PHP file in sites available. Let's reload Nginx so that it reloads the configuration. Okay, let's reload. When I do that, it downloads the index.php file. It doesn't run it, it doesn't execute. So <laughs> that's because we have shown no special treatment of PHP files that can't work. What we have to tell, we have to tell the server that lo when location matches, location tilde means regular expression matching, it matches dot PHP at the very end of the location name. So here backslash dot means escape the dot character, which is special character for regular expression. Escape it and then dot PHP and then dollar sign means end of the file name, end of the path. When you match such a location, what should you do? You should include the fast CGI underscore params file, which is an ETC Nginx. It sets up some basic parameters and then pass this request using fast CGI protocol, pass it to Unix socket. That is on var run php5 fpm.soc. So with these two lines, every request ending in .php will be uh, sent, will be captured within this block and it will include these parameters and then pass on the request to php5 fpm running at that unix socket save and then again reload once we do that and reload this now we have php running this is the output pretty long php status output coming from coming from this just a single function call php info so that means php is running okay if all you were interested in was doing running um, linux nginx mysql and php then you are almost done at this point but as i promised we will go one step further and we will install drupal but before we install drupal we will install drush let's do that so let's become root again for a moment and say php pair php5 pair oh no just pair pair channel discover pair dot rush dot org so what it does is pair is a package manager for um, extension manager for php and it is going to pair dot rush dot org and uh, discovering the channel i guess so that it knows what software is available there then we say pair install from the drush channel install the software named drush so this downloads drush the drush software from the drush channel that takes a few seconds at least Drush, by the way, is a very powerful um, command line interface to Drupal. So a lot of people who, when they start out, they are uh, using Drupal completely from the browser UI. But as you get better at uh, and you get more familiar with Drupal, you realize that you, doing everything on the browser UI is rather slow. So Drush automates all those things. Uh, Unix people like command line I like command line it makes me more productive so I highly recommend using drush so at this point pair install drush slash drush is taking a few seconds okay now finally it's done then before I will use drush as a regular user I must use it once at least as uh, as root so make sure you run drush status as root before you start using it as non root because it, it downloads another extra library that it needs and that has to be done as root. Let's exit root 
and now we are regular user Jitesh and I will go back to my dev directory and use Drush to download Drupal 7 or just Drupal let's Drupal let's say Drupal 7 okay so when you do that it downloads Drupal great and but it downloads that into a directory which has both the major and minor version in it Drupal-7.37 I don't like the minor version being a part of the directory name because they are rather dynamic uh, changing so rename to, from Drupal-7.37 to Drupal just 7 all right now we go to Drupal sites default okay now we are about to start and now we have Drupal software we need to configure nginx so let's again turn into root for a little while sudo minus i cd etc nginx sites enabled now we had this php site let's remove that php site disable it now it's not doesn't exist here in sites enabled but it does exist in site available all right let's open a new uh, server configuration in sites available uh, but before we do that we need to do something else we need to go one level up create a directory called apps here we will use our highly reusable application configuration so the application the first application we are using is Drupal so what we do is we go to the internet and uh, search for Drupal nginx configuration that's the string we look for and we find this very first link which is on wiki.nginx.org slash Drupal this has a very uh, secure and optimized uh, configuration file so we we omit we don't e keep this part we uh, you know what let's just copy the whole thing from beginning to end so copy the whole thing and let's cop put it in clipboard we come back here in apps and we output that into a file called Drupal 7 and then we paste what we copied from there and to end the file redirection we press ctrl D ctrl D ends it and I open this Drupal 7 because I want it to be a reusable configuration I delete this first part because I'm going to include this in my server blocks delete that I delete the corresponding closing closing a curly brace and there is one more change I need to make uh, the fast CGI pass path that this script uses is slightly different from, from what I need to use so mine is unix colon var run php5 fpm soc that's it that's the only change I need to make I see make that change and save and quit now I can go to sites enabled and now I say vi dot dot sites available Drupal and here I say server listen on port 80 and um, the server name will be server 5.spinspire.com the root will be home jitesh dev drupal 7 that's the document root and then we include apps drupal 7 and that's it that's all we have to do to make this a drupal site let's save this suspend and say service nginx reload let us see if this works i go back here and reload and it seems it didn't work something didn't work so let me see why reload one more time oh yes i know what happened I, hmm, no no it didn't oh yes i never enabled it sites enable has nothing so yes I need to go to sites available. I need to create a symbolic link from sites available Drupal to the current directory sites enabled Drupal. So now this will work. I need to reload 
nginx configuration oh it failed didn't work so something is wrong with this server name root include oops it should be apps i misspelled it save it let's try again okay this time it worked and i reload and there you go drupal installation screen great at this point we will before we go further now let's go let's keep going and i i use the standard profile save and continue in english yes continue at this point it complains about two things one that it is not able to create files directory and two it is not able to find or create even uh, site default settings.php we can fix both here first let's exit being root and in sites default let's create a directory called files because the web server is running as www data user and not as jitesh user it's not able to create it so i created it for them and i will copy default.settings.php to settings.php so i did both of those things for them but i need to give uh, the web server user um, ownership of files and settings.php so change group to www-data of files directory as well as settings.php oops c h g r p yeah that so once i do that now www data is the owner of both the files directory and settings.php and then it has also write permissions to both of them which is kind of important one more thing i should change mod group plus s which means group set uid gid bit on files so that future files uh, when they are created the group will remain www data so once you do all those things you are ready to proceed with the installation and yes it allows you now we don't have a database name and we don't have a database user uh, so let's uh, let's create a database for that we could either go to sudo -i become root and type mysql or we could do both of those things in one step by saying sudo -i and then mysql right there and create a database we will call the database d7 default okay and then we will grant all on d7 underscore default dot star to the user let's say let's create me as a user jitesh at local host identified by and i want to give it a random password so let's generate the random password using the same old trick open ssl rand 16 minus x so that's a fairly random password copy and go back here i just went to another terminal to generate it and i go back and save it that's it with this i created a new database and i assigned uh, full access to the jitesh user and it creates the jitesh user in the process and assigns a password to it that's, we're done now in order for jitesh user to be able to use it without actually entering the password let's do what we did for for um, for root also which is create a my dot my dot cnf file in home directory put the word client section in it username is jitesh and password is whatever we just generated let's just paste that save and quit now i can just run mysql and i'm logged in without providing password good let us come back here paste that password and then database name is d7 underscore default username is jitesh let's see save and continue So it, uh, it's almost done already, and it says that you should 
remove write permissions. So we can do that. Let's chmod minus w settings.php and now settings.php cannot be written to. Before we remove the write permission from this directory also, let's create the typical Drupal structure which is mkdir modules contrib minus p for creating parents modules custom modules features uh, libraries themes scripts so this is a standard structure okay then uh, let's proceed back to this server 5 uh, email address uh, use my spinspy.com email address username admin and then password I won't tell you and then the rest of it is fine I will uncheck this update checking because it unnecessarily sends emails I don't want that plus this is not a production site so now visit our site we have Drupal great uh, so that's all folks just wanted to show you how to install Drupal and how to um, create a cloud virtual machine install MySQL Nginx PHP Drush and Drupal on it hope you learned something you can check out the notes for this video on spinspire.com uh, the link will be posted in the video's description thank you for watching